somebody else but you're 99.9% .9 the same as the other person chimpanzee I can't get it out this morning a monkey <laughs> shares 96% of your DNA that's 3.9% different from what you are I'm not going any farther th than that but uh, what I'm saying is God is into the minute details I know that God made us different than he made the monkeys or anything else. But I'm, I'm telling you that the God who created us pays so much attention. And there's such a little bit of difference in what makes us up from what makes something else up. While I was researching that, I found it interesting that we share... 80 to 90% of the same DNA from plants to animals. And I, it, it boggles my mind that such a small difference can make such a big difference. Amen. You look at everybody in this room this morning, take a look around. We're so different in the way that we look. Some have red hair, some have black hair, some have white hair, some have no hair. Uh, <laughs> We're, we're so different, but yet we're so much alike. Yes. You see, God is into the details of everything that happens, not only in our lives, but also in the, in the universe. Old, Old Testament prophecies about Jesus Christ were recorded in various times and in different places between some 400 and 1500 years before Christ came to the earth. It was humanly impossible to see that many years into the future. Think about it this morning. How many of you could predict what is going to happen 1,500 years from now? 
We have trouble even knowing what's going to happen in a month or tomorrow. And yet they prophesied with hundreds of details that were accurate down to the most minute detail about the coming of Christ. The events that took place around Bethlehem demonstrate God's knowledge and his truthfulness and his accuracy. In the book of John, chapter 20 and verse 31, it says, These are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. Hallelujah. Matthew 26 and verse 56. All this was done that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. For thousands of years, the promise remained of God sending a Redeemer and a Savior. This goes all of the way back to the beginning of time. Adam and Eve had this promise planted within them. Abraham had this promise given to him. One of the Old Testament prophets spoke the words of God in, in the book of Numbers. Second book. Numbers chapter 24 and verse 16. The prophet said, The utterance of him who hears the words of God and has the knowledge of the Most High, who sees the visions of the Almighty, who falls down with eyes wide open. I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star shall come out of Jacob. A scepter shall rise out of Israel. I want you to notice that both the star and the scepter are written with a capital letter. It's referring to a person. A star shall come who will be the scepter of God. God is going to rule. The one who sees and knows and brings all things to pass showed this prophet that a star would come out of Jacob. The star the wise men saw and followed was not an accident or a natural, natural phenomenon. Over a thousand years before it was shown in the sky, God said it would rise. My God is into the details. In the book of Micah, chapter 5 and verse 2, it says, But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, Though you are little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall come forth to me the one to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth are from of old, from everlasting. Look at this. The king that is coming comes out of everlasting. Verse four. He shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord. In the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they shall abide. For now he shall be great to the ends of the earth. In this prophecy in Micah, Bethlehem is appointed as a place for the birth of God's promised Messiah. What God initiates in Bethlehem, he's carrying out in everyone who believes. Bethlehem is only the beginning. What God is doing is still working in our lives. Amen. Matthew 2 and verse 1. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem. Verse 2. Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship. Solomon foresaw the arrival of wise men from the east. In the book of Psalms, chapter 72, Solomon wrote, The kings of Tarshish and of the isles will bring presents. The kings of Sheba and Seba will offer gifts. Yes, all kings shall fall down before him. All nations shall serve him. Isaiah continued with this prophecy in chapter 60 and verse 3. He said, Gentiles shall come to your light 
and kings to the brightness of your rising. In verse 6, he said, The multitude of camels shall cover your land from Midian and Ephah. Those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and incense and they shall proclaim the praises of the Lord. Isn't it interesting that wise men from the east came and they brought gifts to the feet of Jesus and in their gifts they brought incense and gold. God is into the details. Amen. Jerusalem held the temple and, and it also held the throne of King Herod. It was the center of government. Uh, in fact, all Galilee and Judea and Samaria found its center in Jerusalem at this time. It would have been natural and normal for a newborn king to be born in Jerusalem. When word came of their arrival, these wise men, King Herod became frightened. He became filled with fear. He was alarmed. He called the scribes and the Pharisees and the teachers of the people to see what was written about the Messiah, the Christ child. It's interesting that they turned to the words of the prophet Micah and Micah and Isaiah about 700 years before the birth of Christ said what was going to happen. In fact, the, the details were so clear that it pointed to a city called Bethlehem where Jesus, the Messiah, would be born. After hearing Micah's word that was written, Herod sent the wise men on their way to the child. I want you to hold on to that thought for a moment. Why was Jesus born in Bethlehem? Luke chapter 2 and verse 1. It came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. So from Rome, an edict comes that everybody in the world should be in a census. Verse 2. This census first took place while Granarius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph, Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and lineage of David. Now I want you to consider this with me. Mary is, is expecting baby Jesus. Nazareth is about 1,000 foot elevation to the north, 80 to 90 miles north of Bethlehem. They come down to most think that they came, the path that they took was down into a, one of the lowest places in the world. And then they came back up 3,500 feet elevation to the city of David, to Bethlehem. It's a long journey. Ladies, can you imagine not even being pregnant, riding a donkey for 80 miles? And then going over rough terrain and going back up high terrain to the city of David, the birthplace of King David, and the place where Rachel was buried. That's very significant because of the prophecy. Verse number five. To be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. Verse six. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered, verse 7. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. You need to know that God uh, is into the minutest detail and nothing, nothing just happens with God. 
Can you imagine the things that had to be worked out for them to come from Nazareth to Bethlehem to fulfill the prophecy of God so that the, the new child, the, the Messiah, would be born in Bethlehem rather than in Nazareth? Now, I know how it was with my, my wife and I when we were expecting a child. We wanted to be as close to the doctor as we could and in as familiar territory as we could. I know things were a little bit different back then. Uh, obviously, they were, but they traveled these 80 to 90 miles on a donkey getting to a place and there was no room for them in a house. They had to go out into the, the barn to be to, to, to the manger for Jesus to be born. And all of this was foreseen and prophesied by God Almighty. Amen. Before Caesar Augustus was even born, God knew that the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem. Before there was ever an edict that there would be a, a, a census, God knew that the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem. What does this have to do with you and me? You need to know that sometimes in your life, when you don't understand why things are happening the way that you are, why do we have to go down there to take a census? Why do we have to go over there to pay our taxes? Why do we have to do this thing or that other thing? You need to know that the Lord God Almighty, who is in control of the universe, is in control of our lives. Amen. Amen. Now let's go back to Bethlehem. The wise men just heard the, the prophecy and they go down to Bethlehem. Matthew chapter 2 and verse 9. And when they heard the king, they departed and behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. Verse 10, when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. Back during the time when the Israelites were coming out of Egypt, the prophet of God heard and saw that God was preparing a way for the Messiah. He saw the star arise all of the way back in the book of Numbers. And now in the New Testament, Jesus Christ is born. And these wise men see the star that God had said was going to be there. See, God ordained and arranged the star of Bethlehem before there ever was a star of Bethlehem. You need to know this with the unexpected situations in life. God told the prophet of God, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11, it says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. God knows the beginning and the ending at the same time. Right. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending. And neither Satan nor evil men can, can keep God's plan and will from happening. You need to know this in your life with the drama that's going on right now in your life. That our God is greater than the circumstances that we are facing. The star of Bethlehem, the birth of Christ in, in Bethlehem is a testimony to every one of us. That our God is a God who is in control. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 2 and verse 11. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold and frankincense and myrrh. Verse 12. Then being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed for their own country another way. I want to 
belinger this thought, God is in control of even the smallest details. After the wise men departed, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. And the angel said in verse 13, arise, take the young child and his mother, flee to Egypt and stay there until I bring you word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Isn't it interesting? It is to me that God knew what was going to happen before it happened. Sometimes in our lives, we make unplanned trips. As far as we could tell, everything was out of control. Uh, but God was keeping and protecting us. That's right. God knows the way that you should take when you turn from the right hand to the left. Verse 16 of Matthew 2, the first part says, Then Herod, when he saw that he was deceived by the wise men, was exceedingly angry. And he sent forth and put to death all the male children who were in Bethlehem. Hold on a minute here. He knew that the Messiah, the King, of kings, the Lord of lords had been born in Bethlehem. All of the signs of the prophets told, told him and the wise man that this surely was the one. The last part of that verse says, and in all its districts from two years old and under, according to the time which he had determined from the wise men. So in other words, there is a sound of bitter lamentation and weeping in Bethlehem. God knew that a massacre was coming. He knew that this was going to happen. Go back to Jeremiah chapter 31, all the way in the Old Testament. Listen, thus says the Lord, a voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation and bitter weeping. Rachel weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted for her children because they are no more. Remember earlier, I told you to remember the, the, this about Rachel. She was buried in Bethlehem. Does that seem obvious to anyone? In the place where she had been buried, all of the male children were put to death. Verse 15. In those days and at that time, I will cause to grow up to David a branch of righteousness. He shall execute judgment and righteousness in the earth. Verse 16. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will dwell safely. And this is the name by which she will be called the Lord, our righteousness. When God makes a promise, friends, you can count on it that God is going to fulfill it. You may, you may be wondering, well, why is it taking so long? Friends, God is in control. Don't be afraid. Don't be filled with fear. Don't allow the, the, the pause or the time that you are going through to be something that, that causes you to lose your faith in God. God has made a promise and what God has said he's going to do. Isaiah, the prophet, chapter 11, verse 1. There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse. A branch shall grow out of his roots. Verse 2. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Verse 3. His delight is in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge by the sight of his eyes, nor decide by the hearing of his ears. Verse 4, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor, and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the, the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. Verse 5, righteousness shall be the belt of his loins, and faithfulness the, the belt of his waist. Throughout the Old Testament, God 
warned, told his prophets that there is going to come one. And he kept telling them, prepare a way for the Lord. Prepare a way for the coming of the Messiah. They kept looking. They kept anticipating that one of these days he would come. And in Bethlehem, in a manger, Emmanuel was born. He is the hope of the world. He is the salvation of our souls. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, has come into the world. He has come with real hope, with real peace, with real love, with real life for everyone who will put their trust in Him. Psalms chapter 28 and verse 7. The Lord is my strength. And my shield. My heart trusted in him. And I was helped. Therefore my heart greatly rejoices. And with my song I will praise him. I know that we're going through some very difficult times. I don't know the number of times in our lives. It has felt like. Well, things are just not working. Have any of you ever felt that way? Things are just not working out. I've made all of these plans and God's made all of these promises and I keep looking and anticipating. And I wonder why, why, Lord, are things going the way that they're going? I'm reminded of a word to one of the Old Testament prophets. He had prayed about a situation and there was a delay. And later the Lord came to him and said, the moment you prayed, I sent the answer. Yes, hallelujah. But my angels have been resisting Satan but finally, the realization has come. Yes, amen. I want to tell you, you may be going through a dark day. Your moment right now may be hard, but I've got the word of the Lord for you. And my God is saying, and I, I feel this so deep in my spirit. I feel it's a word from the Holy Spirit for everyone who's hearing my voice. And God is saying to you, if you will keep your faith strong, I'm going to work it out. I know how to work the smallest detail out for your life. Keep your faith in God. Keep trusting in Him. Keep on believing. God is working and the answer is going to come. I believe it with all of my heart and mind and spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Will you stand with me, please? Sing with me. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord. He is the mighty King. He is the Master.
if you're going through an uncertain time and difficult, you're looking for answers and they just have seemed to be evasive. Jesus is going to help you. If you're standing by somebody, could you take their hand? If not, that's fine. I want us to go to God in prayer. Lord, you see what's going on in my brother and my sister today. The things that they're facing, the troubles, the trials, the difficulties, the heartaches, the heartbreak. Lord, the uncertainties, the questions, the unresolved issues. Almighty God, we bring our need to you. Lord, I know, I am persuaded and convinced that you are in control, even of the most minute details of our lives, and that you are working for us. In the name of Jesus, I plead the blood of Christ over our lives and homes and bodies. Lord, I believe that you are the one that's going to work it out. Oh God, those that are facing physical issues, Lord, and they don't have answers, Lord God. I know that you are the one who's able to do it. We put our hope and trust in you. There are some, Lord God, in these days and these hours that don't know what the future holds for their business or for their life or for their family or for their children. Lord, there's so many uncertainties, even in our nation and world, oh God. But Lord, we're putting our trust and our hope in you. We know, Almighty God, that you are in control. I plead the blood of Christ over bodies, over mind, spirit, and soul in the name of Jesus. May the healing virtue come. May deliverance and help come from God Almighty. We believe it in Jesus' name. For you are our strength and you are our shield. And we trust in you. And we know we will be helped. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Hallelujah.